الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وأزواجه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد الرسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم taught us the importance of respecting others dealing with people in the best manners, best way, and making sure that our heart will always stay clean and we don't carry any feelings towards others. At the same time, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, out of his rahmah, his mercy for the ummah, he told us the methods that we should use in order for our heart to stay clean. A lot of time we would like our heart to stay clean and we don't carry no feelings about people. But then, all of a sudden things will keep on coming up that will tell us no, not anymore, not this person. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave us some beautiful instructions about how to keep our hearts clean. And this was something that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam always emphasized on. And he always told the Sahaba Ridwanullah alayhi he always talked to them about it. That make sure you keep your heart clean, no feelings against people. We need to remember one thing, when we look at the ahadith, and especially when we look at the practices of Sahaba Ridwanullah alayhi we see one thing very clearly, that normally when we have a feeling against others, we consider that person to be bad. And when we look at the life of Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een, when they carried feelings, feelings about others, they considered themselves to be bad. A major difference. When we know something about others, we feel that this person is bad. When they came to know something like this, they felt that they are very bad that they would think like this about this person. And this thing was such a great practice in those days that we find in some of the ahadiths that one of the sahaba or sahabiyat would see with their own eyes, they would see something that they would know it's wrong. And then they approach the person and talk to the person. And if the person says, I didn't do it. Even if this person have seen something with their own eyes, will reject his eyes and believe in what this person is saying. We find that some of those incidents also. And that's not easy. I have seen it with my own eyes. He says, no. If this person says, no, he didn't do it, that's it. In this regard, we have a lot of hadith and a lot of different examples. We won't even have time to go into all of these beautiful examples of the hadith and instructions beautifully that are beautifully explained in the hadith. But some of these ways that are mentioned in the hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith which is in Sunan al-Tirmizi, narrated by Anas radiallahu anhu. He said once Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam advised me and he said, Ya Bunay, إِنْ قَدَرْتَ أَنْ تُصْبِحَ وَتُمْسِيَ وَلَيْسَ فِي قَلْبِكَ غِشٍّ لِأَحَدٍ فَفْعَلٍ O oh my son, if you can do this, that every morning and evening you look into your heart, make sure you don't carry no hard feelings towards no person. Make sure you do this every day. And morning and evening simply means every day of your life at all times. Make sure that there is no hard feelings towards no one. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, Ya Bunay, wa dhalika min sunnati. Oh my son, this is my sunnah. Remember Anas radiallahu anhu, when he went to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to stay with him, he was only 10 years old. Normally with children of that age, we don't even talk about this thing. In fact, we would like them to find out more about what people are doing and tell us about it. But here, 
Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is teaching Anas radiallahu anhu, Oh my son, make sure that every day you look into your heart and you carry no hard feelings, no, nothing against any person. And next word that he used is extremely important and that is, وَيَا وَذَلِكَ مِنْ سُنَّتِي Oh my son, this is my sunnah. What does this mean? This is my way of life too. I never carry no feelings against people. I don't carry no hard feelings against others. I always keep my heart clean. In fact, in one of the hadiths, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, once he came out and he announced to the Sahaba Radwanullahi alayhi wa sallam, لَا يُبَلِّغُنِ أَحَدٍ عَلَى أَحَدٍ شَيْئًا فَإِنِّي أُحِبُّ أَنْ أَخْرُجَ إِلَيْكُمْ وَأَنَا سَلِيمُ الصَّبْرِ I don't want anyone to tell me things about others. Because I would like to come out and when I see people, my heart is clean with them. What an, what an important announcement. لا يبلغني أحد عن أحد شيء. I don't want people to keep on telling me things about others. Because, why did he make that announcement? He is the Prophet of Allah. And everyone would like to be close to him. And we know, in order for us to be close to the elders, we have to tell them against others. Whether people do it or not, try to find out things and then go and reform. Make up something and go and tell. So you get closer. Someone is coming on your way, you start telling on him. This is a normal way. Good or bad people, everyone falls under the scene that we would like to tell about others. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, therefore he made this announcement, that I don't want anyone to tell me anything about others. Because this is not a method of getting closer to me, you will only be informing me that you carry these feelings against others. Once, Muawiyah radiallahu anhu wrote to Abu Darda radiallahu anhu. He said, I heard that there are people who are involved in some of the major sins in your town. Make me a list of those people and send it to me. Abu Darda radiallahu anhu, when he read the letter, he put it aside. His son read the letter. He said, Dad, are you making that list? I have some names too. So he makes his son sit now. Son, tell me, did you really do any of these things? No, says Dad, I'm telling you about others. I know some. He says, look, you would know those people only when you associate with them. And if you associate with them, you may be doing it too. And if you don't do it, then don't talk about them. He says, my answer to Muawiyah radiallahu anhu is, I don't know these people. Because I don't, I don't even know where they live. I don't know what they do. And I don't enter into people's homes to find out about them. So Anas radiallahu anhu said, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave me this beautiful advice that every day look into your heart, make sure it's clean. Ya bunayn wa dhalika min sunnati. Oh my son, this is my sunnah, this is my way of life. Woman ahabbani. A person who loves me, he loves my sunnah. And a person who loves my sunnah, he would be with me in Jannah. We can see that how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam connecting purity of the heart with entering the Jannah. Another hadith is even more straightforward towards this connection of entering the Jannah with pure heart. And it's a well-known hadith. I'm going to just mention a small portion of it. And I'm sure everyone would remember the rest. And that is when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sitting with the group of Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi wa And he says, a person is going to be passing by here who would be going straight to Jannah. He is guaranteed the Jannah. Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As radiallahu anhu was sitting in that gathering. He says, I started envying that person, who this person is, and here we see a person 
who is not too known to us. Like, he's not like Abu Bakr, Umar, he's not something of that caliber. We thought it would be one of those people. But this is a person that we normally didn't think that he is too great of a person amongst ourselves, of course. He's a normal, average person. Second day, the same statement. And the same person passes by. Third day, the same thing. Abdullah ibn Amr says, I went to the person. And I said, uncle, I would like to spend some time with you in your home because I had some differences with my father. Just look at the statement. I have some differences with my father. So can I stay, spend, uh, spend some time with you, stay some days for, with you at your home? He says, sure son, welcome. And he goes and stays with him. And his intention is, he would like to watch his ibadah. And see what special ibadah does he perform for which he's getting that special reward and guarantee of the Jannah. Abdullah ibn Amr radiallahu anhu said, I spent three days with him and I didn't see nothing special. Nothing special means normal life of those days. He gets up for Salat al tahajjud and then he goes for Salat al-Fajr and then he is with the Jama'ah. But it's nothing like this a Sahabi would consider extraordinary thing. Third day he approached him now. He says, Uncle, I didn't have no differences with my father. It's only that I wanted to see your ibadah and that was the whole reason he tells him the whole thing. So could you tell me what is special thing that you have been doing? Because I tried to watch you very closely and I didn't find anything. He said, son, as you have seen, ma huwa illa ma ra'ayt. It's everything that what you have seen in me. That's it. I'm not doing anything else. But uncle, has to be something special. I don't think so. I don't know why. But yes, the one thing for sure, that every night before I go to bed, I forgive every person and I make sure I carry no feelings against no person. He said, yes, that is the reason for sure. And that is something that I'm not able to do. Abdullah ibn Amr admitted. He says to him, that is something I'm not able to do. Now I mean, a person would approach us that I have some differences with my father. Right there, that will ruin everything in our life. What happened? What did your father do? Is he like this? That is enough. All the virtues, they were gone. But even after hearing this statement, no. That situation of his heart did not change. And he did not want to investigate now to find out something about his father now. Good. Now I'm going to get his father too. And whenever the time will come, I can say something now. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran about the people of Jannah. إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَ اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ A person who would come to Allah with clean, with pure heart. قَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ A heart that is clean and that is pure. And all of these things, they spoil the heart. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith, دَبَّ إِلَيْكُمْ دَاءُ الْأُمَّمِ قَبْلَكُمْ A disease, or in fact we may say a contagious disease that spreads very fast. It's a virus that have passed on to you people from the previous ummah. This disease was there in the previous ummahs, previous nations, and it had transferred into you people. Al-Hasad wal baghda Jealousy and hatred. Two diseases, he says, came from the past, from the past and from the previous ummahs. And you people are affected by them. There is a virus going on. That is the virus of Hasad and Baghdad. Jealousy and hatred. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then says, وَهِيَ الْحَالِقَةِ And these two things, they shave it totally off. They just shave it off. لَا أَقُولُ تَحْلِقُ الشَّعَرِ I don't mean they will shave your head. وَلَكِنْ تَحْلِقُ الدِّينِ They shave your deen and iman in your heart. Just look at the wordings. How clear it is. 
how simple it is to understand, but at the same time, what's our position with it. Some of the things that we consider the major ones, it doesn't say about them that this thing is going to shave off your iman totally. But here, al hasad wal baghda, jealousy and hatred, wahi al haliqa, these things they just shave it off. La aqulu tahliqu din, tahliqu shi'ab. I don't mean they will shave off your head, but walakin tahliqu din, it's going to shave off your iman. Imagine if a person has a razor that he's using every day. Every day he's using it on his head. How much hair is he going to have for that day? Now with this hasad, with this jealousy, with this hatred that is shaving off the iman, how much do you think it's left in there? How much of that iman is left in there? When there is a razor, when there is a machine that is just shaving iman, whatever comes in, it shaves it off right, in, right there and then. These are some extremely dangerous things. A child is holding to a flame of a fire and he doesn't want to understand, he's about to hold it, he doesn't want to understand how dangerous this is. A child is playing with a match, he's playing with the iron, he doesn't understand how dangerous this could be. Not only that he's going to burn himself, he's going to burn the whole household. He's going to burn, burn the whole, uh, whole house here with all the people that are living in it. One person in the family with this disease, as Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi says, this disease transfers very fast. One person in the house with this disease, he keeps on talking a bit against others. He keeps on talking about others. He keeps on running after people's faults. And now he involves everyone in the household with the same thing. This is what everyone is hearing. Now as people keep on hearing these things, they talk about it. These are the feelings they carry about others. Just because of this one person in this house, the whole house is nothing but people who are just full of grudge and hatred. We all know the hadith about the 15th of Sha'ban, where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that everyone gets the forgiveness on that day, on that night of the 15th of Sha'ban, except two people. This is a very authentic hadith. There are some other hadiths that mention six people and some hadiths mention some more, but there is some witness in those hadiths. This hadith is the most authentic one about it. That says two type of people will not get the forgiveness even on the 15th of Sha'ban when everyone is getting the forgiveness. And uh, there was a clan called Bani Kilab and they had a lot of goats, a lot of goats, largest number of goats that ever any person ever owned was owned by that clan. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he said, he wanted to just give an example so people will understand how many people get the forgiveness on that night. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, more people than the hairs on the goats of the clan of Bani Kalb. More people than the hairs on the goats of the clan of Bani Kalb. But two people would not get it. Kafir, a mushrik, will not get it. And who's with mushrik? Who's the second person? Mushahin, a person who carries grudge against others. Imagine when this person is getting that connection and he is put, being put in the same level of that mushrik. There could be some major sins that if it was up to us, we would put this sin very down and we will say there are a lot of other major ones that are more important to put with this in this situation there. But no, the Prophet of Allah says, Kafirin aw mushahin. Aw mushrikin aw mushahin. Mushrik and a person who carries grudge against others. These two people don't get the forgiveness. <coughs> and there are really, no exaggeration, hundreds of hadiths regarding this topic. But the point that I wanted to mention at this time here was, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as he told us the importance of keeping our hearts clean and making sure we carry nothing like this that will just shave, us our, shave off our iman. Subhanallah, a person with all of his ibadah, with all the good things, and he's looking down at others that look, these people are bad, these people do this. At the end, he was presented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he finds out that his iman was totally shaved off and there is nothing in there. 
What will happen to this person? So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as I said, out of rahmah, really, this is nothing but his rahmah for the ummah. He gave us detailed instructions of how to keep our hearts clean. And we will just go through some of these examples in these sessions. So at least we have some clue, some understanding, and then we can go back and study this topic in more detail and start looking at the hadith from this angle. One of the very important instructions about keeping the heart clean is not to get into people's business. Two people are talking in that corner. Right away my thought is, they may be talking about me. So let me find out what's going on there. What are they talking about? And if one of these people happens to just look at us while he's talking, see, I knew it. And not only this, I have seen this with my own eyes. May Allah protect me, I don't know if I have done it, but I know that I have seen it. We don't look at our own faults, so we don't know. That, this is what these people were talking about. But how do you know? Oh, don't tell me, I know it. And the person is, so, is talking about it now so, with so much confidence as he is part of it or he was hearing everything, whereas it was nothing like this. I know it. This is the person. You find something, a flat tire. Your car had a flat tire. I know who did it. And right away, it may be that the person you have in mind, he doesn't, never even dreamt about it. He never even thought about it, never went through his mind. But I know. How do you know? Act, really, it will be very interesting in these situations you talk to this person. How do you? Oh yeah, I know. This I know becomes more important than any other proof in the world. Even if that person would come and say, you know, believe me, I never did it. I can hold to the Qur'an. I know it. He can hold to the Qur'an, but I know it. This is how firm we get with these things. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that will lead us to another topic that I don't want to study at this time. And that is, husn al and su al Thinking good or bad about people. Some other time, inshallah. But the point is, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave us this instruction in many of the hadith that don't get into people's business. Don't worry of people are doing. Don't instead just thinking about what people would do, may do, they are doing. Just stay away from it. In one of the hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, a person who gets into things that do not concern him. Ma la ya'ni. A person who gets into ma la ya'ni. Things that do not concern, concern him. Laqiya ma la yurdi. Surely he will be facing a situation that he does not like. Surely something will happen with him that he does not like. He will get himself into trouble. He will get himself into a difficult situation. Only because he likes to get into people's way. He likes to get into people's business. If someone is doing something, it's not concerning me. I haven't seen the person doing anything wrong. Why do I have to now get into his way? More than this, what normally happens is, we try to find people's faults and mistakes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected us. We didn't see it. We didn't know anything about it. Now the person would like to know about it. So ask someone who may have some, some, some information about it. You know, I heard that that family is having some fight between the husband and wife. Have you heard about it? What do you know about this? Now the person is after people's faults. He would like to know things he doesn't know. One person doesn't know it. Second person, third person. He is going to try to find out. Whereas our attitude should be, if there are people talking about it, get up and leave. Because you don't want to hear it, and then have some feelings, and then it will be difficult for us to clean those feelings, and we will end up paying for it. 
So it's better for me not to even sit here because I don't want to know it. I don't want to hear about it. Once I hear it, it's going to spoil my own heart. And why should I do this for? What I'm going to get by knowing this person is fighting with his wife. Whether he's wrong or she's wrong. What, what difference does it make to us? Say I found out now. One of them is bad. One of them is wrong. So what? Now, it's nothing but carrying that feeling against that person that look, this person, this is how he deals with his wife, this is what he does and he argues. And... It's nothing but najasa in my heart. Dirt in my own heart. Something that is spoiling my own heart. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith narrated by Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu لا تؤذوا المسلمين Don't hurt the feelings of the believers. Don't hurt the feelings of the believers. لا تؤذوا المسلمين ولا تعيروهم and never mention their faults to them. You know someone have done something and now you tell the person, yes, you are the person who did this once. Remember one day you were doing this? لا تعيرهم Never mention their faults to them. ولا تتبعوا عثراتهم And don't run after their faults. Two different things. One is, you know something, don't mention it to the person just to insult him, just to humiliate him, just to make him feel bad. It's not allowed. Number two, don't even run after people's fault to find out. You have nothing to do with it. Don't run after people's faults. In another hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Hadith in Sunan Abi Dawood. And the words are stronger than this one now. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ya ma'ashara man amana bi nisani, wa lam yadkhul al-imanu qalbu. All those who are mu'min only with their tongue and iman have not entered into their heart. Look at the wordings. All those who have, who have become Muslims only by their tongue, their iman is nothing but a claim, but a word of mouth. And iman have not entered into your heart. Who are those people? لا تغتاب المسلمين Don't backbite Muslims. These are the people that he's upset with. لا تغتاب المسلمين Don't backbite people. ولا تتبعوا عوراتهم And don't run after their faults. Don't try to find the faults of people. فإنه من اتبع عوراتهم يتبع الله عوراته a person who would run after people's faults, Allah will reveal his faults. Allah will not cover up on his sins on the day of Qiyamah, and not even in this world. فَإِنَّهُ مَنْ اتَّبَعَ عَوْرَاتَهُمْ يَتَّبِعُ اللَّهُ عَوْرَتَهُ وَمَنْ يَتَّبِعُ اللَّهُ عَوْرَتَهُ يَفْضَحُهُ فِي بَيْتِهِ And when Allah will start revealing your faults, He will insult you even within your own home. Now we know, when a person walks into the house and you hear curses from there, it's not just because she is bad. It's a reaction of something that this person has done. This person is running after people's faults. This is what he talks about when he comes home. Now this is what he's going to, the effect of it, that now his own family is going to be talking against his own faults. His own family members will be talking against him. Of course, this is in this world. And it's still much lesser than the punishment of Akhirah, which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says is, that on the day of Qiyamah, when people will be expecting their sins to be covered up, everyone carries sins. Everyone has done wrong in his life. We, will not, we need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to treat us according to his attribute of a sitar subhanahu wa ta'ala who covers up everything. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that a person who runs after, after people's faults, I will not cover up his faults and mistakes in Akhirah. In fact, I will reveal them to people, I will announce it in public. This is a habit where really 
Not only that we like to run after it, then we like to inform people about it, we want everyone to find out, somehow find out. And for people, virtuous people, we don't tell people. You know, this man, I can't even tell you about him. I can't even tell you about him. This is virtuous person, he doesn't want to talk against people. So this is why all he would say, I can't even tell you. I have seen him doing things, but I can't even talk about it. This is, mashallah, his virtuous man. He has said everything now. In fact, now the other person may be thinking worse than what you have in mind. Because you just said few words that will now start playing with this person's mind. And mashallah, with our very nice brains and minds and hearts, we want to start thinking low, we will start thinking at the higher end. And what is the cause? Is what this person has said. This is why Imam Ghazali rahmatullahi alayhi, he was hakim in this field, very wise. He advises in his ahyal ulum, he says, don't even talk good about people. Just don't talk about people. Don't even say good things about them. Because you know what happens? After mentioning few good things about a person, then you will say, yes, this is mashallah, these are things are very good. But the other side, I don't even want to talk about. So you just throw one word that ruins all of those good things that you said about the person. And now you scat it, scat it at least the topic of saying something about him, something bad about him. If you say, you will get the sin for it. If you don't say, now the other people are just thinking bad about this person, because you said, after that but, and we always know, that but always comes. MashaAllah, very good scholar, very nice, and very virtuous, but, and then now, after but, it will be only two words. Just like, I'm sure some of you would know who the person is. There is a person who wrote some books, where he admires Sahaba, Allah That MashaAllah, Sahaba, their position was so high, and all the Sahaba are so great, and Allah says this about them, Hadith says this about them. But, sometimes they did this too. And this is how he puts it. And now, people, who are impressed by the writing, they say, look how much he admired. Do you think he doesn't like them? But this is exactly what this person is after. That he tries to bring some good things so people will digest what comes after that. If he comes right up front, look, Sahabi did this, a Sahabi did this, we won't even hear it. But now, Sahaba are so great, they are, they are important and they are important, virtues in the hadith, but they did this. Now, after all of this, these good things, when a person would read that thing, what impression is going to have about Sahaba Allah Just like there is a word normally mentioned in our lectures and our people read those words a lot that Islam is a good religion, but Muslims are bad. Nothing wrong with Islam. Islam is a great religion. Muslims are bad. This is not something that we said it. Someone else said this word, and now our people very proudly read this. That look, even non-Muslims see, Islam is a good religion. But Muslims are bad. So who's good? Christians are good. Jews are good. Hindus are good. Sikhs are good. Muslims are bad. Is this what we are saying? That word, as Mufti Mahmoud Rahmatullahi Alayhi has made a very beautiful statement about this. He said, this is mental bribing. Just like sometimes you pay someone to do something, give the person hundred dollars and then ask him, okay, can you sign this form for me? He won't sign it for free, but now hundred dollars, you know, will make him think about it. So when you want to see, you want to curse at the person, admire him first. And then you say the bad word about him too. So because of all of those good words, he will accept that last word that you really wanted to say. So this is same way mental bribing. 
And that is, Islam is a good religion, so we all, mashallah. See, this kafir is admiring our thing. If he's really so impressed with it, why doesn't he become Muslim? But no, that's a mental bribery. So that me and you are ready to hear the next word, and that is, you are very bad. If he would come straight for it, Muslims are very bad. Who are you to say this? But no, Islam is a good religion. Muslims are bad. Yes, yes, that's true. This is mental bribery. Same thing, we admire the pure person, and at the end, but he did this too, or he's like this too. So it's nothing but mental bribing to make people hear the good things and then say good things about you. Look, this is really, he's not that he hates him, he likes him. He said all of these good things about him, but he knew this too. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam advises us, don't run after people's faults and after people's mistakes. Because when a person runs after people's faults, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reveal his faults, and Allah will not cover up his sins in akhirah, will make him pay for all of his sins. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always give us a clean heart. A heart where we carry no hard feelings against others. Where the heart will always remain clean, and if any of these feelings comes, we realize, that is the sickness of my heart, is nothing wrong with that person. That person may have repented. That person may have just got back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and got the forgiveness for his sins. And me, I'm carrying it up to this day. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and guide us. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات وآخر دعوانا الحمد لله